Whenever the question arises over who the most important member of the Straw Hat crew is, I always tend to have an answer that is different to many. Naturally, with the exception of Luffy, without whom the Straw Hat pirates wouldn't exist, the most common answers are always Zoro, with his responsibility as the crew's first mate, and his great strength. Sanji is another popular Straw Hat for his cooking ability and comparable strength. There's even Robin for her vast experience and ability to read poneglyphs, and even Frankie is very popular amongst fans. Without whom the crew would not have the incredible ship the Thousand Sunny that they sailed the seas on. Frankie is literally responsible for giving the Straw Hats one of the most advanced ships in the entire One Piece world. Now when it comes to my answer for who is the most important member of the Straw Hat crew, I believe it to be Nami. Her role within the crew at least before Frankie and eventually Jinbei had joined was to be the Straw Hats navigator and helmsman. She was responsible for keeping the Straw Hats alive while traversing the fierce seas of One Piece. Now this is one of opponent that only Nami is able to fight, and if at any point she had lost the battle against Mother Nature, it would have undoubtedly spelt the end of the Straw Hat Pirates. It must be remembered that the reason that the Grand Line was referred to as the Pirates Graveyard was not simply because of the strength of the Marines, or the terror of the Yonko, or even the power of the Warlords. It was due to the vast number of unexpected, unexplainable, and absurdly powerful weather phenomena that acted as a death sentence for inexperienced sailors. I feel it is not an exaggeration to say that without Nami, the Straw Hat Pirates would have fallen before even reaching the Grand Line. With their ship capsizing and ultimately being destroyed when attempting to traverse Reverse Mountain. During the present day, Nami has advanced to become far more than a simple yet vitally important navigator for the crew. Her loyalty to Luffy and his dream were demonstrated to beyond any doubt in a fight against Ulti during the Wano arc. Her strength was shown to be significant with her climate control abilities combined with the raw power of the homie Zeus, who she had stolen from Big Mom. This thundercloud who was created from a soul fragment from Big Mom had demonstrated incredible feats during the Whole Cake Island arc. And as already mentioned, Nami's knowledge has ensured that every island, every climate, and every disaster that the Straw Hats have encountered has been one that they are capable of conquering. But in this video, I would like to take a step back and to focus not on the present Nami, but on her past. The story of Nami didn't begin with Luke. Luffy. Through her backstory, we understand the reasoning behind her actions during the early portion of the story when she was first introduced. And Nami's backstory is so pivotal to the plot that it was the entire focus of one of One Piece's greatest early story arcs, Arlong Park. So in this video, we'll be covering Nami's past all the way from her conception within Ichiro Oda's mind to her departure from the Barati as a suspected traitor to the Straw Hats. Without further delay, this is the backstory of Nami. The past of Nami is linked to the origin of how her character was created. Oda had taken a great amount of inspiration from Silk and Anne, two of Oda's earlier characters from his one-shot manga Romance Dawn, which as you can likely tell from the name, provided a considerable amount of its concepts towards early One Piece. Nami was born in the Oikot Kingdom, a small country in the East Blue that 20 years ago was embroiled in a war when the island was attacked by a group of pirates. The ensuing conflict between the pirates and the marines decimated the island, with the pirates managing to murder a large number of the population. Among the deceased were the parents of a young girl named Nojiko and an infant named Nami. While the two were not related, Nojiko had rescued Nami and had gone to search for help with her. Now this help would come in the form of a wounded marine officer called Bellamia, who had in fact been a part of the contingency sent to eliminate the pirates and to protect the citizens. Bellamia would flee from the Oikot Kingdom with Nami and Nojiko, taking the two girls back with her to Kokoyasi village, a village located within the Konami Islands, and the village in which Bellamia was born. The group one by one would fall ill as they were forced to travel through a storm to make it back to the island, where Bellamia would demand that the girls be treated before herself. She would then ask the villagers not to register the girls with the world government, instead choosing to adopt the pair of them herself. Nami and Nojiko would grow up on Bellamia's Mikan Grove on Kokoyashi, with Bellamia selling their Mikans as the family's main source of income following her retirement from the Marines in order to look after her children full time. Now this would only provide a small amount of income for the family, with Bellamia mainly surviving off of eating her own Mikans so that she could afford food for Nami and Nojiko. As a child, Nami had developed a love for
for cartography and navigation. This had ultimately led to her dreaming of drawing a complete map of the entire world. Bellamio would be supportive of Nami's goal, however their poor financial situation had meant that Nami would attempt to steal the books that she would use to learn from. Now while Bellamio would scold Nami for her actions, it did nothing to diminish her faith in Nami of one day achieving her dream. Unfortunately, the family's happiness would quickly be impacted by their relative poverty, as Nami had struggled to understand why they were unable to afford the things that they had wanted. This situation would only be exacerbated as the price of Mikans had dropped, and the family's situation had worsened, which Bellamia had hidden from her children. This would eventually culminate in a fight between Nami and her family, where her anger at only ever receiving Nojiko's hand-me-down clothes would lead to her yelling that Nojiko wasn't her real sister. This caused Bellamia to slap Nami, which only worsened the situation as Nami went on to yell about Bellamia not being her real mother, and that she would have been far happier if she had been adopted by a rich family instead. With tensions high, Bellamia had told Nami that she could go wherever she had wanted to, causing her to leave. Nami had fled into the village where she had met with Genzo, Kokoyashi village's sheriff. She informed him that she had run away from home, which caused him to laugh given that she was only minutes away from her home. Here, Nami had admitted that she had believed that Bellamia would be better off without either her or Nojiko, as they would then no longer be a burden to her financially, showing that Nami understood the family's situation better than she had let on. She also explained that her reputation as a thief and troublemaker had only made Bellamia look worse to the rest of the villagers. Genzo laughed at this as well, and would go on to explain some of Bellamia's past to Nami. Notably, that when Bellamia was Nami's age, she was also referred to as a troublemaker. He then went on to explain how Bellamia would eventually join the Marines, leading up to the day that she had returned wounded and ill with both Nami and Nojiko in hand. This had surprised the rest of the villagers. After Nami had learnt about her history and how she had first arrived onto the island, Nami had returned back home with Nojiko. It was at this time, however, that the fishman Arlong, the leader of the Arlong pirates, had come upon Kokoyashi village, and he had demanded a tribute from everyone on the island for them to be allowed to live. The price was set at 100,000 berries for every adult and 50,000 berries for every child. Nami and Nojiko hid in the trees on the village outskirts, watching as the pirates went around collecting the villagers' tributes. Realizing that the group would soon reach their home, the girls had ran to be with their mother. Bellamia had attempted to fight off the group, however, she was ill-prepared to take on a group of fishman pirates, especially given that Arlong and some of his members had previously sailed with a powerful crew in the new world called the Sun Pirates. Bellamia ultimately paid Arlong with the entirety of the family's savings, amounting to just over 100,000 berries. Knowing that without declaring any payment for them, Nami and Nojiko would end up having to flee the island alone. Bellamia called out to the leaving pirates that the payment was not for herself, but rather for her daughters, declaring that she would rather die than not to be called their mother. With there being no point in hiding their presence any longer, the two girls had rushed to embrace their mother. In order to keep his word and to set an example to the rest of the villagers, Arlong had executed Bellamia in front of her daughters. Upon discovering Nami's skill in cartography, Arlong had forced her to begin working for his crew, hoping to use Nami's talents to map out the entirety of East Blue and to allow him to conquer even more territory. As part of the deal that she had made with Arlong, he had promised that if Nami was able to accumulate 100 million berries to bring to him, he would then free her village. Nami returned to the village now wearing a tattoo of the Arlong pirate's Jolly Roger on her arm, and had told the villagers that she was now the cartographer of their crew. This had angered Nojiko, who had attacked Nami declaring that she would not allow her to be a part of their crew. Nami had then remembered some advice that was given to her by Bellamia, that if she was able to survive through the difficult times, then the good times would come eventually. She had ended up ignoring Nojiko's protests. Genzo advised Nojiko to stop, and had informed Nami that she was no longer to set foot in the village, to which Nami had agreed. Nami had left for the grave that had been set up for Bellamia to spend some time alone, but she had encountered Nojiko there as well. They talked about how the marine ships that had been sent by the world government in response to Arlong had all been sunk, and that they would not risk sending any more. Nami had revealed to Nojiko the full extent of her deal with Arlong. In response, she had told Nami that the amount to free the village was far too high for her to accomplish alone. Nami had replied that she couldn't ask anyone for help or there would be a massacre, and that she didn't want people to suffer because of her. Nami began working hard to purchase Kokuyashi village from Arlong, believing that once she had liberated the village, she would finally be able to pursue her dream and to find happiness. For the next eight years, she made maps for Arlong, while stealing treasure from any pirate crews that she had encountered by 
pretending to join them before swiftly betraying them. She would hide anything valuable that she had taken within Bellamere's Mikan Orchid as she had slowly attempted to accumulate enough to pay off Arlong and to free her village. It was at this time that she had stolen a map of the Grand Line from the legendary pirate Buggy the Clown, leading to her making an enemy of him and his crew. Knowing that she would be unable to face his crew head on, she manipulates a nearby pirate into defeating his crew for her. And this pirate, of course, was called Monkey D. Luffy. What would follow was Nami's standard process of joining a crew only to betray them in the future while stealing as much treasure from them as possible. The only issue on this occasion was that she had genuinely grew to care for the crew around her. This had made her decision to betray them far harder than any other. Yet ultimately, her desire to save her village had won out. The treasure that she would steal from the Straw Hats would finally provide her with enough funds to buy back her home. Something which proved to be far harder than she had initially thought. The events that follow with Nami and the Straw Hats eventual conflict against the Arlong Pirates is something that I'm sure that you will be all too familiar with. Personally, it was the Arlong Park story arc that had made me fallen in love with the story of One Piece. And it was at that point that I was truly invested into seeing the outcome of Luffy's journey. I really love making these videos covering the different aspects of the One Piece story. So if you did enjoy this video, then definitely check out some of the others available on the channel. This is part of a series in which I explore the pasts and backstories of some major One Piece characters, including the Straw Hats. If you have any other recommendations for other One Piece topics, if you want character analysis videos, or some explained videos where I talk about mysterious aspects of the story or abilities explained, then definitely leave your recommendations in the comments of this video. Once again, thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I cannot wait to see you in my next One Piece video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.